Hey people, I'm working on a RE150 here, and um, I should have made a video right from the start on this because it was kind of a fun thing to fix, but uh, I came across a problem I haven't had before, and I thought I might share this with anybody that might encounter something like this. Uh, when I got this machine, there was a uh, something rattling around in the bottom of it. I opened it up, and oddly, there were some screws that were glued, or nails that were glued into uh, this holder here. There was a piece of tape on it and a rubber band running across from here to here. And uh, clearly they were trying to solve this tension. Now they could have solved a lot easier by doing what I ended up doing, which, uh, let's see if we can see this. The screw that was rattling around was the screw that holds uh, this arm in place, which was right down here. It's tough to see, but there's a little screw here. And this is where they had uh, glued these nails in for some reason. I, I don't know why they didn't just put the screw back in. Here's the remnants of the rubber band that was was used to try to hold that arm over. So anyway, what I did uh, was just put the screw back in and then uh, everything seemed to be, you know, back in order. However, there wasn't enough tension on it and I think that's why the rubber band got involved. So, uh, you know, when you turn the machine on, uh, you hit the button and this little actuator pulls this wheel over and allows the pinch wheel to turn. But uh, it wasn't putting enough pressure on it, so we were getting real inconsistent and you had to kind of help this thing out once in a while, get an inconsistent uh, echo repeat rate. So to solve this problem, there's a little hole on a 150 right here. And uh, by using this hole, and uh, let's see if we can get a good angle on it. This is not the best way to go about it, but by using this hole, uh, I took a, a needle nose and a seven millimeter and loosened this up. Uh, it's a locking nut here. There's two nuts on this. And uh, you just tighten up that inner nut so that the actuator is pulling, uh, has less distance to pull and allows a little bit more tension on the, on the pinch wheel. And then once you get it where you think you like it, and it seems to give the right right amount of tension, then just tighten up the second locking nut on there. And since I've done that, this thing is working like a champ. Otherwise, it's in really beautiful condition. Uh, so I'm happy to report that that solved and uh, was a fairly easy fix. It's the first time I've had that uh, problem crop up. Uh, I shouldn't say that I've, you know, I've adjusted this on machines in the past to give a little more tension, but it's the first time that the screw was completely missing. So uh, also, you know, obviously I lubricated the pinch wheel and I lubricated the swing arm here where it goes through the machine so that uh, the actuator doesn't have to work so hard to pull that lever over. So anyway, that's that. Uh, I'm going to finish up here. I've been just kind of cleaning, trying to get the remnants of this tape off the deck here. And... Um, you know, I'm going to finish cleaning up the heads here and I'll uh, put this beast back together and uh, we're going to have another nice one ready to rip. Okay, a lot of people might be familiar with this already, but in case you're not, I'm just cleaning the heads and, and uh, you know, this is as simple as just taking some head cleaner or alcohol and, and really cleaning these up good. But this is a 150 and interestingly, they use the same... Uh, you know, chrome piece here as a 201 or a 101, but the 150s have one less head, and the way they get around it, you can see the screw holes are there for another head assembly, but they just put this little tape guide here to compensate for that missing head. Uh, I still think the 150s are a wonderful machine, and they're a little bit cheaper. You can get into them for a lot less. You know, you don't get the reverb. Uh, and you'd get one less head, but they still sound really good. But it's just interesting that they they didn't really redesign anything here. They just eliminated one head and put themselves a little uh, guidepost instead. Okay, it's come time to put the tape back in. I'm going to reuse this original tape that was in here. It looks to be in pretty good condition, really. Uh, although it, you know, has kind of retained the shape it was in, but that'll, we can get rid of that over time. So I think I've shown this on numerous other videos, but just in case somebody stumbled on this one for the first video and they're curious about how to load your tape, uh, I've washed my hands, so we want to 
avoid getting a lot of oil and things on the tape. But we're just going to feed this tape in here. I think this is the best place to start because it kind of holds your tape. Don't bend this thing, you know, more than you have to. And uh, normally a 201 has a little trap door, or 150, uh, 101 has a little trap door that makes this a little bit easier of a proposition. But we're going to get around here. And uh, that's about it. Get it through this little spot here. Uh, that other little piece of felt and then you want to get it between the pinch roller and the capstan which I'm sure I'm blocking this with my fingers right now but uh, you know we're going to run through here and through that little holder and then uh, we're just going to move this out of the way now again normally this has a swing door but they've you know they've reduced cost by just putting a solid piece in here but we're going to put our uh, speed rate, repeat rate, all the way down the lowest setting. And uh, I'm just going to turn everything else down. Not that Nothing's plugged in, so it shouldn't matter. But at the lowest setting, we can kind of control this thing a little bit more. And we're just going to uh, make sure the tape doesn't come out of the chamber here. And just let that thing feed. Here, my finger's on the power button at all times, so if there's any kind of a bind up, I can shut this thing off quickly. Uh, but we're just going to kind of let that thing go. At some point, you might need to start holding the tape so it doesn't work its way back out. All right, so now you can see we've got a little bit of a bind up there. And I'm just going to try to flip that around without creating too much of a disturbance here. Takes a little fidgeting. All right, we're in. So at this point, uh, we can put our cover back on, and that'll ensure that uh, the tape doesn't come out. Now, uh, I like to just turn my re repeat rate up and watch that thing and make sure there's you know, no issues there whatsoever. And we're looking good. It's rotating around beautifully. So at this point, we can uh, put our little nuts back on. Okay, we're nearing the end on this thing. I'm kind of turning this into a, you know, a repair video, I guess. That wasn't my intention. I just wanted to share that uh, actuator arm situation with you. But uh, I'll link this uh, video to uh, when I go to sell this thing. So I just uh, thought I'd give whoever might be looking at this a chance to really look at the inside and see how good this thing is. Uh, it's really in nice condition. Let me bring this up just a little bit. And uh, these are our two clips, and I'll, I'll film putting it back together. But just to give you an internal look at this thing, it is in really nice condition all the way around. Uh, you know, the motor and everything is spotless in here. Sometimes in Japan, you know, we're close to the ocean, and uh, those sea breezes, as it were, can uh, wreak havoc on electronic equipment on the inside. But... As you can see, this thing is really in phenomenal condition. I hit all the pots with uh, contact cleaner and uh, worked those back and forth. And I uh, cleaned up all of our inputs here uh, with uh, a little wire brush. And they're, they're nice and clean. So this thing is going to sound absolutely phenomenal. Here's the little brush I used to go through. Uh, all of these just to, to clean them up so there's wonderful contact with uh, the quarter inch. Okay, I'm going to clean up the cabinet and we're going to get this baby back together. Okay, we're ready to put it back together. Cabinet is all cleaned up and uh, I washed the cord and uh, hit this with some armor all and then washed my hands so I don't have quite so much armor all on my fingers here when I put this back together. Some people might think the armor all is a bit too shiny. You know for these machines but in reality that uh, the sheen tones down rather quickly and I think it's good to protect that Tolex with uh, you know the little bit of whatever it is in armor all that uh, kind of softens things up and and uh, hopefully protects them a little bit all right so we're back in we're looking terrific 
Now it's just as simple as uh, putting this back together. Now remember, uh, we have to insert these little uh, funky little holders here. And this sometimes takes a little bit of finagling. I don't know if that's the best term, but I think it's going to work. So let's finagle. There it is. All right, I like to start with these, and, and I don't tighten anything down too much uh, initially, just because uh, it's easier to line everything up if uh, you know you have a little ability to move things around. All right, there's two. Now, get her over on this side. over to this bad boy. All right, now we can go back and tighten up those two on the top. And we can admire this bad boy. <laughs> okay, uh, this turned out absolutely gorgeous. Uh, it's in beautiful shape. I cleaned up the hinges and with a little chrome polish. That's that, and then uh, one thing too, if you tighten these up too much, uh, you'll make it hard for the cabinet to, uh, the door to shut. You can pinch this so much that, uh, you know, the cabinet door doesn't want to shut. So you just kind of leave those uh, tight, but not overly tight. Okay, and then we got these two, and hopefully they line up perfectly and uh, seem to, uh-oh. This one doesn't want to go. Let's take a look at what the deal is here. Should be right. All right, we're off a little bit. So I think we're going to try to tighten this side a little bit more. Still not quite there. Let me investigate this. We seem to be in the right spot. I wouldn't think there'd be a left and a right. For some reason, we're. Uh, let's try loosening this one up. Try to bring the whole thing over a little bit. I'm going to leave them loose for now. How about that? All right, we might have just learned a technique together. Leave them loose, get them where they fit, and then tighten them up. Let's see if it goes back together again. Okay, opens nice, shuts good, and now it works. All right, that's the technique. All right, it's been a while since I've been on a 150. Oh, look at that. Isn't it beautiful? Look at that. This is probably the nicest 150 I've ever had. I don't know how they get any nicer. The face plate is mint. Sounds incredible. Uh, cabinets almost mint. It is mint. What's, where's the issue? Point it out. So, uh, happy with that. I really wish I would have started the video from the very beginning because it was fun to figure out that problem and overcome it. But uh, anyway, I think you get the gist of that whole situation with the tensioning arm. Mmm. Gorgeous. All right, we'll test it out real quick. Okay, we're looking great. Let's check this thing out. Check. 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 Echo volume. Check. 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 One. 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 One.
This has got one of the slowest, slow settings. Check. Around. I love that. Two. 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 Three. Four. 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 Five. 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 So this is single over here on a 150. Six. 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 So it's just going to be one echo. Check. 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 Got a little bit of dust in there still, apparently. Check. 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 Awesome. 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 Check, 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 check. All right, all right, that's great, 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 great. So uh, this is direct plus echo, and this is just echo only, or essentially when, when, when. Check, 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 check. All right, people, we did it. It's a beauty. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's a 150, about the nicest one I've ever seen. Again, I don't know how they get any better. What, what could, you know. What could make it any better than this? It's beautiful. Okay, thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions, drop them down below. I'll try to answer them for you. Take care.